I just want to talk about Rockstar Games Take Two Interactive and the modding community for Grand Theft Auto because at the moment it's a mess. It is quite possibly the biggest mess the modding community has seen ever when it comes to this sort of thing. So if you don't know, recently Rockstar Games and their parent company, Take-Two Interactive, sent a cease and desist to the creators of Open 4. Open 4 has been a mod manager of sorts for GTA 4 and GTA 5 that has existed for the past 10 years. So to see it go is a major loss to the modding community because now, at this point in time, we have no way of modding GTA 4 or GTA 5. Rockstar's reasoning behind this was that the Open 4 toolkit gave malicious tools towards the GTA Online community, which is Rockstar's main focus of business. Because when you create a platform that utilizes the shark cards that Rockstar uses, you sort of tend to focus more on that. And if modding needs to suffer in order to protect that, then so be it. And that is what happened here. And a lot of people are very upset. A lot of people are very passionate about what has happened. And I think that this could go two different, three different ways, really. Um, one, and this one seems quite likely, is that Rockstar themselves are just going to flat out abandon their practices on modding, which has been the same since it's been since GTA 4. As long as it doesn't, harm the multiplayer experience, the mod is deemed okay. And that's the way it's always been. Modding for GTA 4 was always okay because the online component to it wasn't, didn't have the breadth that the GTA Online does. Again, going back to the shark cards, there are people paying actual money to Rockstar and Take-Two in order to not pay to win, but pay to better their, their playtime. And again, if that means single player modding has to suffer, it will. So the first and logical option is that Rockstar will just flat out abandon it. We won't, we won't be able to mod anymore. Anytime someone tries to create something similar to Open 4, it'll probably just get a cease and desist. It'll just hit a roadblock after roadblock after roadblock, and it will never truly get to thrive and live. Option two is something that I've I've thought about and I think would be a really good idea that would benefit both modders, online players, and Rockstar. But it takes effort from Rockstar. And this would be to separate the two components. If you don't want people tampering with this game, separate the online component from the single player component. Most of us might not even care that it'll have to be probably another 65, 70 gigabyte download in order to just have the single player experience so that we can do whatever we want to it. That would be the easy and logical approach. Then we could have something like Open 4 come back and people just won't be able to toy around with online because it would be a requirement that they would have to run it in this single player executable versus the online executable. So that would be the simple and logical approach. The third option is the one that I'm calling the nuclear option. And this, when I say nuclear, we could also call it the Bethesda route. And this is also in the realm of... Ugh. So when I say 
the Bethesda or nuclear route. I'm talking about their recently announced Creation Club. And with this, Bethesda aims to bring third-party developers, in this case modders, and make them developers for Fallout 4 and Skyrim. So they will continue to make these mods for Skyrim, for Fallout 4, but Bethesda will pay them to make these mods. So I can kind of see Rockstar going that way. Because at the moment, Bethesda is the only, only games company that supports modding on console. And to support that means that you have an infinite amount of ways that people can continue to play, continue to enjoy your game. So what I think is that and this would be the nuclear option, Rockstar would create their own version of the Creation Club, which would basically be the modding platform. You would have modders create this stuff, and then Rockstar gets to profit because you, they charge you for this. Because in order for you to pay for these creator, Creation Club creations, because they're not mods, they're not paid mods, they're just creation club content. It's outsourcing third-party development of sorts. So you get these points or coins or whatever, and you use that to buy the content, similar to how Microsoft points worked back in the day. You had points, you bought DLC makes sense. So if Rockstar went for this approach, modders could be vetted by Rockstar. These mods would be vetted by Rockstar so they would be approved and they would make a profit and they would also pay out the developers we would hope. So that's a sort of the nuclear option and I, I don't favor that option simply simply on the premise that if they went this route it wouldn't it wouldn't fly over Bethesda's tried this before they've done it with uh, paid mods on Steam which was kind of like it was supposed to be tipping the developer so that the developer got a little bit of money for developing their mod but it backfired because to get the mod you had to pay for it and why would I pay for it when I could get the same mod on Nexus mods for free so it flopped this is a much different approach and Bethesda is kind of sly for bringing it out years later rather than just hey here's paid mods but it's not paid mods and that's sort of sort of where I think Rockstar would head, simply because in some way or another, they want to profit off of it. And to profit off of it, this would be the way. Personally, I think the number two option would be better. Just make single player its own thing. Separate the components. It's It shouldn't be that hard to do. And quite frankly, I think a lot of people would appreciate it because a lot of people that mod on PC just don't flat out play in GTA Online. And a lot of them can't because sometimes online gets triggered and then they get banned for it. So if, if you want to appease both sides, the game needs to be separated. However, I wouldn't fault them for going for the nuclear option. Um, I don't think they'll go that way. But at the same time, I don't think they'll listen to what I have to say and just separate the two games. I think that they're just going to ignore it and they're just going to keep going on with GTA Online. Because why would they listen to us 
when tons of people play GTA Online and that's where the money is. All the money's made there, which if we're led to believe analysts, they're making about a quarter billion dollars every year on shark cards. So it's, it's not like they need to care about modding. That's just my take on it. I do want to know what you guys think. So please sound off in the comments below. Please, please let me know what you think. Do you think Rockstar should go with any of the approaches I, I mentioned in this video? Do you think that they should go a completely different way? But anyway, that's just my opinion. This is my humble opinion. And I thank you for listening to it. And I'll see you again next time.